Today, I'm going to show you a method for scoring points in your basketball game. We have two teams here. I got blue team right here. This guy's blue. And you can only score on the team that you belong to, right? The basket of the team you belong to. Brah, that's pretty cool. If I go over to the red basket, I'm not going to be able to score on that. Let's try that one. And if you'll notice, I made the basketball shoot much more accurate. Ah, oh, no bueno. And also, if you go underneath the basket, you're not going to get a point too. Here we go. Nope, no point. I thought that'd be pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get started. So this video leverages off of other videos. If you have been following along, that's okay. I'll put this link in the description. You go ahead and put it in your address bar, get to this page. It's gonna say get model. And this basketball court for video has all the stuff you need to follow along exactly. So hit your get model, come over to a fresh world, hit the toolbox and inventory tab right my models now you'll have it because you got it from the website we're going to go ahead and click that yep there's four scripts it's not going to work right away there's going to be a few things we need to do let's go ahead and go to our basket backboard hit f cool we're in the court let's go ahead and set this thing up so we can use it now the basket itself is fine. We're going to make two of them. Let's close that. Everything is in the ball, this ball accessory. So I put a little readme file in there. It's not going to be as descriptive as what I'm going through now. I want to get this game manager. This has my leaderboard stuff, right? We've got the leaderboard stuff. Let's drag that down to server script service. There we go, server script service, and we'll hit enabled. And I need a remote event. Well, I got one right there, right? Shoot RE. Let's go down to replicated storage, put our remote event, shoot RE in a replicated storage. And what else? We got our NM saves. We'll get to that in a second. Ball manager, let's enable that. There we go ball loc that's for clicking on the basket and making the shoot let's enable that and we'll drag this down to in the starter player i just dragged it in the starter player because it wasn't open and then i'm going to put it in how about starter player scripts now i have two animations the carry and the shoot you're going to have to save those animations under your account. Let's go to avatar. This is all for R15. You can convert it if you know how. It's not that bad. So I'm going to go to rig builder R15. I'm going to pick a rig that I like. I'll do the mesh avatar 2012. There we go. And let's go to the ball up here, the basketball. And I have the anim saves. You can just drag it because if you screw up your animations, you could just get the model again, right? And I need to put it in the rig, right? There's my rig. Boom. So the rig right here has the anim saves. Now I'm going to close this so I have a little more room. I'm going to click on the animation editor and then it says select the rig. Sweet. So you're going to get the keyframes from the NM saves. This one right here is ball carry, right? It's pretty simple, but you need to save it off. You need to publish it under your account so you can use it in your games. Hit these three dots. Check to make sure the animation priority is action. It is published to Roblox and carry ball. I think I'm going to do carry BB vid right and let's go ahead and save that off we'll go submit looking good get this id hit those boxes close we're going to go up to the ball carry anim you need to put your id in where my id was i'll do a control v to paste Boom. Now the carry should work for you. We need the shoot. Let's go 
back down to our rig. We don't really need to be in the rig. We just click on it, right? And it says click here to use the animation editor. Hit the three dots. We are gonna load the shoot. There we go, there's the shoot animation. Boom, All right, pretty sophisticated. All right, let's get the three dots. Let's look at the set animation priority. It is action. We're gonna hit publish to Roblox. And I'll do shoot BB, oh, I keep hitting the V, BB underscore vid. And let's get our submit. We'll get the ID, get those boxes, close, go back to the ball, shoot and M, control V. Now you have your published IDs inside the ball we could get rid of him are you feeling brave we, you'd have to do it again if you if you messed up let's close this let's hit play and see if we can make a shot we might have an error there's a lot of setup here right so let's go to our view output window oh yeah it's looking pretty good all right, so let's move on to our next step. I'll turn this off. We gotta make some points, right? We also gotta make another basket. We gotta make some teams. So in the Explorer, we can come down and take a look for the teams, the team service. Used to have to add that, but it's already in here now. Let's hit the plus sign. We're gonna add a team and we'll call this. I did, I did what, red and blue? How about red? change the team color to red. And then I did really red. Hit the plus again, add another team. We'll make this blue. All right, and then we'll get the color. What I do, really blue, consistent, huh? So let's go back up to our ball. There it is, it's in the court. And this is gonna be very similar to the creator tag pattern, but I am just going to add a permanent tag. I'll hit plus on the ball, on the accessory itself. And I think I'll add an object value, just like what the creator tag is. And we'll call this, how about last person, right? So this is the last person that touched the ball. It'll remain even when the ball's let go. And in the value, I'm gonna put the player that touched it last. We'll go to our ball manager there, and then I'm gonna get a variable in there at the top, top-ish, right? We'll say local um, last person. That'll be ball accessory, right? Dot last person. And let's go down to where we do our shoot, right? We got the shoot RE. Oh, here's the improved calculations. So I'm going up on a 60 degree tra trajectory on the ball throw, I did a 45. So I made the calculation a little more, a little more tricky, but not too bad. I'm gonna look for where it says character that has me. I wanna go above that because I'm gonna need that to actually populate my last person. So character that has me is the person who possesses the ball. You're not gonna be in this if statement if it's nil. So a person definitely has the ball, that's definitely pop populated. Let's get our last person dot value and I'll do game players, get player from character, well, character that has me. That's gonna put a value right here in this tag where we got last person. Cool, let's copy that because they may not shoot, right? They may not shoot. They may just be carrying things around. Where should we put it in here? We could do it after the play track. That'll be fine. Boom, so if someone picks up the ball, it's, it's rolling around, it's nil. We're gonna give them a character, we're gonna give the ball a character that has me, and then we're gonna set that last person to the player that actually has them. 
Same here. This is a pass. Somebody took the ball, right? As somebody who's not the character that has me. Let's go ahead and update last person on that too. I think that'll do it for the last person tag. Now let's go ahead and make our basket. I'm going to complete one basket before I duplicate it. I need two sensors in here. I need one above the other. I'm going to do alt. I'm going to click that bar right there, right? That's part of the funnel. I'm going to do a control D, make sure my collisions are not on. So I'm going to do a control D so it duplicates in place. This funnel, I'm going to call this hoop, right? And this is going to be a sensor, right? Let me just move that in there. I'm going to change the size. Uh, I'm not going to change that right away. I'm going to hit anchored. Make sure that's anchored. And I'm going to turn can collide off. You see where can collide is? Here it is. Can collide off. I want to make it invisible. You might not want to make it invisible right away though, because you're working on it. So maybe like a 0.8 right now. Now let's change the size. I'll go to scale. Maybe move this in, move that in. I might make it a little bit lower here, a little bit higher there. It's not really that important how big it is, but you do have to make sure the ball cannot pass without hitting the sensor. You also want to make sure that the sensor doesn't come out on the other side of the rim, right? So that they get a point even if they didn't make it in. I have that indented a little bit. All right, now I'm going to do a control D to duplicate that. I'm going to move this one up a little bit. There we go. And remember, they're invisible, can collide is off. I'm going to call this something like top hoop, right? Or, uh, yeah, that's good, hoop top or something. Cool. Ah, oh, I got a slash in there. Let me get rid of that. Boom. So we got the hoop, hoop top. I'm going to select both of these and I'm going to make them into a model. Group as model. And I'm going to call this the hoop. If I could spell it right. Hoop. Let's open up our hoop and then we're going to add a script. Server script. Right? And then we'll call this like something like score or count point or something like that. How about count points? All right, here, I'll make this a little bigger so you can see it a little better. We'll do a little bit of coding. Let's go ahead and get a variable for the hoop. All right, and that's script.parent. So we go up a level and then we look for the hoop. Cool. We're going to get the hoop top equals script.parent.hoop top. Nice. And we're going to need a cooldown. I'm going to do can score and let's see, that's going to be the debounce. This is going to be the cooldown time. So I'll do cooldown and let make it like a 0.5, right? Cause we're, we might want to have to have like rebounds and stuff like that. And I need a team hoop. I need to indicate what team I have. So on this hoop right here, should we put it on the basket? That'll be easier for people to see when they're configuring it. Yeah, let's put it on the basket itself. Open that up. I think I'll do like a string value. String value. And I think I'm going to call it team. Make it simple. Maybe team value. Ah, no, team's good. All right. In there, we can make it the value we want, like blue or red or whatever. So far, let's, let's put red down. And then let's go ahead and change the color real quick. I'm just going to leave this script for a second by going over to my world. I'm going to do an alt click so I get my backboard. The backboard will make it red. That's not really red. Here's really red. It doesn't have to be exactly the color, right? It just, it could be, it could actually be any color. That's not going to be associated with the team. What we're going to do, let's go back to our count points, right? And if you lost it, it is in the hoop in the basket, right? There's, there's the count points. 
All right, so now we're going to get our script dot parent, and we went up a level, right? We put the team on the basket, not on the hoop model, and then I'll do team value. That's going to get me a string. So let's do the hoop first. So we got this hoop, and we're going to do a touched event. That's the one underneath the hoop top. So if that if the ball touches that, we might want to give a point. Let's do other part. That's going to be the parts of touching the hoop, hopefully the ball. Let's do a check. Let's say if other part dot name equals equals handle, right? The handle is the part of the ball that you're actually touching. And other part parent name equals equals. It's like ball, right? So if you start changing the name of that ball, you might run into some problems. We're using literals here. Eh, it's not the best, but it should be fine, right? Then let's put this on two lines so you can see it. You're welcome to keep it on one line. I have my text roll big. So if the thing that touches, if this other part is named handle and the parent is a ball, just in case we don't want their, their hat setting off anything, right? Then we'll do a uh, local player. And we got our other part, parent, and then I'll look for the last person, right? So last person, remember that's that object tag that's on the ball. So the other part will be the handle, this will be the accessory, the last person will be the tag. If you have a ball that does not have a last person, you're gonna get an error. I'm not gonna do a check because I know there's gonna be a last person on the ball. I only have one ball. I am going to clone it though in case the player dies. We haven't we haven't uh, addressed that situation. You could lose the ball and then the game's over. You'd have to restart your server, but that's easy enough to fix. So if we have a player and can score is true, then we're going to set can score to equal to false, and we're not going to turn it back on in this in this function. We're going to turn it on in the top part of the hoop. So they have to pass through the top before we can pass through the bottom. And we're going to get the, uh, the leader stats of the player, the last player that touched it, and increase the points by one. Remember, we have this in the game manager, and we have points on there. And then the value will be plus equal to one. Now, the top hoop is going to be similar. Let's just do a control C. I'm going to put it above because it's a top hoop, right? And then let me just change this hoop. We didn't call it top hoop though. We call it hoop top. Hoop top. Other part's going to be the same. This part will be the same too. Let's make sure that it's the ball. All right, let's make sure that there's a player. And then here, player's good, but I'm going to check the team. I'm going to say player dot team dot name equals equals team hoop control C right here control V and that's the value so the team hoop so remember this team hoop that we put in our basket here it is we just called a team needs to match the name of the team right here in the value. So that red team, this will be red. If the player is red, this will be true. If the player exists, uh, also will be required. And then can score will be true, right? So it passed through the top. We're not going to score them yet. We're going to do a wait. Well, not 0.5 seconds literal, but maybe the cooldown. There we go. And then that's going to allow the bottom part to score for a half a second. So you might have to change that value if you see people scoring that they shouldn't. All right, that's looking good. So that's going to turn on this. And then that's going to allow uh, scoring. Let's go ahead and test this out, but we're going to have to test it with teams, so we need to go to the test tab. I hit two players. We'll have one in the red, one in the blue. Only the red should be able to score. I'll hit the start. I'm going to pause the video because that takes some time to start up. 
All right, we got our test player running. I can close these so we have a little more room. Let's get the ball. You remember, you need your red guy. We're going to go ahead and see if he can make a point. Boom. Look at that. He got a point. And let's pull the server over. Uh, there it is. Let's look at the view output of the server. We don't see any errors. That's good. See, it says server up here. The other two are the players. All right. Now, this guy should not be able to score a point because he is blue team. We get close. Nice. All right. Looking good. And then red got it. Right. Red got it. Cool. We got another point. All right. Let's continue on. We'll go back to our workspace. We are going to duplicate this basket. All right. Here's our basket. Make sure collisions are off. I'm going to hit a control D to duplicate, but now we got two baskets. Let's call this one blue. Should call the other one red, right? Blue. Let's drag that over here. And you can place it precisely if you want. I'm just going to approximate. We'll do a rotate. There we go. 180. Move it back a little bit. And let's open the basket. Let's make the backboard blue. Really blue. And then the team, this is the important part, we have to call it the team who owns the basket, which will be blue. Right now we have a basketball game where we can score based on what team we're on. All right, so I got my test server running. This is red guy. Let's see if we can get a score. Boom. Oh, you know what we need to do? We need to add the cheer. Let's go ahead and add the cheer now. So rather than fumbling around in the toolbox looking for a cheer, I added one in the model that you imported. If, if you don't have it, you can find one, right? So under the player, the starter player scripts on the ball loc, I added this simple cheer. Cool, and you're welcome to find your own. Like, but, but name it so that you can spell it in your script. We're gonna go to our ball loc. I have a cheer which references this cheer right here. Make sure this name, this cheer, is spelled the same or you're gonna get an infinite yield error and this code won't execute, right? So I put that in there and I gave you uh, this right here, this cheer. Now what we're gonna do is, I think I want everybody to hear the cheer. So I'm gonna go to replicated storage. I'm gonna hit the plus sign. I'm gonna hit a, hit a remote event and then I'm just gonna call this cheer re right and then we're going to capture cheer re we have replicated storage here right we'll just get a another reference to a remote event this is going to be cheer re i did a cut and paste if you didn't see that it was kind of sneaky of me All right so we'll do a cheer re oh man two re's make sure that's spelled right that name and the one to replicated storage have to match. I'm going to go down, do my cheer RE. We'll do an on client event, connect that, do a function, and let's just hit the cheer play. And I should have done this in, so when I did count points before I duplicated, Let's show that. Let's show an explorer. All right, so we have two baskets. We have a basket and then we have a blue basket. So in our count points, make sure that's open. We're, we're gonna have to get replicated storage, local RS, replicated storage. So game, get service, replicated storage. I'm getting weary. And right, now we're gonna get our cheer RE from replicated storage, wait for child, cheer RE. We're gonna come down here. When we score a point, 
Cheer RE is going to fire all clients. Everybody's going to hear it. All right. Now, remember, we're going to have to do this. I'm just going to copy all of it. Control A, Control C. We're going to go down to our other basket. Where is the hoop? There it is. Count points. Control A, Control V. I just did a cut and paste. All right, now let's try this out. Everybody should hear the cheer if they make a point, if someone makes a point. All right, so I got my player going. I've been shooting some points. Seems to be working great. Who is he? He's red. If he goes to a blue basket, shouldn't get a point. Nice. If he goes to a red basket, boom. Yeah, he got it. That's pretty cool. I mean, pretty basic, but kind of fun. Look at that. He's going to hand him the ball. There we go. Come on over here. Make a shot. Oh, he missed it. If you click funny, the trajectory is going to be wrong. There we go. It's not perfect, but it's pretty accurate. You may have to nerf the accuracy a little bit. Like, look at this. Is he red? He's blue. Ah, oh, yeah, he missed that one. Oh, well, that would be pretty good if he could make it from there every time. I will see you in the next video.